why are black people so violent? Why are black people? Are violent? Bl okay, you want the answer to that question? Oh, I do. I want to know the answer. It's a combination of low average IQ and high serum testosterone combined with a lesser ability to defer gratification. Oh, if you, because the combination of low IQ and high testosterone, no matter what the race of the person, makes a man more likely to commit crimes, uh, primarily of violence, but other crimes as well. Furthermore, an inability to defer gratification. And you can prove this if you take a group of white children, a group of black children, and you say to them, I will, you have a choice of either one marshmallow now or three marshmallows a half an hour from now. Asian children are more likely to say, well, I'll wait and I'll get the three marshmallows. Then the Asian are the most likely, then comes whites, then comes blacks. Black children want that one marshmallow now, even if it means they don't get three marshmallows in a half an hour. That kind of mentality of being unwilling to sacrifice now for the future lends itself to a kind of smash and grab mentality that makes people more likely to commit crimes. So it's a combination of those three things. And you but find it doesn't have anything to do with being in a system where you're systematically deprived of things, because black people are systematically deprived of resources in every area of activity. <laughs> then uh, why why are why are the violent crime rates so high in African countries as well? Why are they high? Why are they high in Haiti? Lie. That's hmm? a complete ball taste lie. Okay, another lie. All right, <laughs> sorry. A week or so ago, they, the crime rate there is damn near non-existent. In many okay. African countries, the crime rates are extremely low. So that's not true, sir. But, okay, but, sorry, but, yet another lie, yet another white supremacist lie. Well, if we do have a lower IQ, mm -hmm. and we can't defer gratification, and hell, you're making some very good points that the testosterone level has an effect on the brain based on the environment, and black people just are just genetically, we're just born violent. What should white people do to black people? To black people? Well, I don't think white people should do anything to black people. And I think that the races are better off living separately. And it sounds to me as though you would agree with that, insofar as white people are incurably white separate, uh, are incurably white supremacist, wouldn't you be better off with your own independent country away from the influence of all these wicked white people? Every time black people do try to do that, the white supremacists come over there, take over the country, and drain the resources. So where are we going to go on a global system of white supremacy, Jared? <laughs> there, there's oh, just no point. way out for you poor guys. Yeah. Huh? Where do we go? Where do we go that's not dominated by white supremacy? In the case of Liberia, white people were very happy for the Liberians to establish Liberia, they helped them go. They did their best to make it a success. It was the Liberians who ended up making it not work. And when Marcus Garvey wanted to send his people to Liberia, it was the Liberians who told him, no, we're not interested in you, Marcus. We have our own little place here. We don't want you coming to dominate us. There would have been plenty of white people who would have said, Marcus, take your boys and go. Well, in Liberia, they just dropped off a bunch of people who had no connection with the land and they didn't give them any resources. So that created a conflict. So you just can't yeah. drop off somewhere. They didn't have a connection with Liberia. You just drop people off who were born and raised here generation after generation and just drop them off into some random land and then say, okay, go at it. Of course, there's going to be conflict. If you take white Americans, wait, 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 wait. there's going to be a conflict. No, no, I'm not talking about conflict. In fact, once the, the Liberians established themselves as top of the heap, there was a certain amount of conflict, but they established a country. And wait, 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 wait. What? And the white people were happy for them to go. The people of the American... dominated Liberia. They dominated, the white dominated Liberia. They dominated the economy there. Well, and they course, still do dominate the economy over there. Of course, in your view, uh, white people dominate the economy of the moon. White people are only about 15% of the population, you know, and they dominate the world. Where they control people, everything. Where should black people go? Where, where? Wait, where are white people supposed to go? I think that's probably better. <laughs> Europe. <laughs> Europe. We'll go back to Europe. I mean, that, that, that's been go. flooded with refugees. Uh, do you believe the theory that you guys, black people, built the pyramids? Is that true? Yes, of course, of course. Who else of course built it? 
Who else built them? Three thousand years ago. Do you, you, believe, you believe you were Kangs? Is is that true? Oh, yeah, no. Who built the pyramids three thousand years ago? They tested mummies from between thirteen eighty BC until four hundred twenty five AD. And they found that the DNA of these people is very closely related to the ancient people of present day Israel, Jordan, Syria, that these were Middle Eastern people. Today's Egyptians, which I don't know, I don't know if you would call them black, but today's Egyptians have some black admixture, but that admixture showed up about 700 years ago. The people who built the pyramids were by no means sub-Saharan Africans, and that has been clear for years. Or even the, the paintings, the, the statues, mm -hmm. all of it is shown that they were, even over in the so-called Middle East where you say they originated from, how come there are not 3,000 year old structures in a similar manner there? Well, why, sh why should there be? I mean, it would you just happen to, well, and the ones that- I'm trying to say a group of people left where they came from. No, they, no, I'm not saying they left country, there. Went to another country, built up all these structures and didn't do it where they were from. Well, they did it where they happened to be when they had the resources and the idea to do it. Uh, of course, within the Middle East, there were these enormous ziggurats and the Babylonian hanging gardens. They had quite an accomplished civilization there as well. But my point is, when they built it was, what? Now, you got pyramids down in Ethiopia and other parts of um, southern Africa. You have stone structures. But in the Middle East, you don't have 3,000-year-old statues even remotely close to what was in Egypt. So this whole theory that they were building stuff in Africa that they didn't build in the country of origin makes I'm not saying it's the country of origin. One of the point is they are genetically similar to the people of that area who built the ziggurats and the hanging gardens and uh, the Colossus of Rhodes and all of that sort of thing. Those are the people so-called Middle East, that was just another satellite of Africa. All of that stuff was okay. controlled by Africa. These were black African people. So that's just okay. what they, wow. they used Now, where did the white people come from? Were they were they created by uh, uh, a guy on Patmos, uh, Yakub? Did Yakub well, I, cook them up? I, I, I look at it from a scientific standpoint. The white supremacists came out during the Wormian Ice Age. This is when the people who are classified as white now were depigmented because they were in the Wormian Ice Age and they lost the melanin being stuck oh. in the ice. And the, the, the nose became alkaline, the lips became thinner, the alkaline, hair became longer huh? to protect the neck because of the heat thing. So there's a scientific reason for it. Not to say anybody's inferior or superior. There's scientific adaptations to the body that causes people to become depleted. So that's uh, what okay. So there were black people everywhere, but yeah. uh, white people. Now, then where did white people appear from? Um, came from Europe. They came out of Europe during the Wormian okay. Ice, after the Wormian Ice. The white people okay. were fairly. Oh. Even but, but, the scientists, scientists say this. White skinned people, the story came out today um, um, in a European um, um, publication saying that white, white skinned people really is about six to 8,000 years old, relatively new. Mm, well, that, that could very well be. White supremacy really started dominating 500 years ago. Because remember, when you guys were going through the Dark Ages in Europe, right, it was right. actually black people called the Moors who came in there and brought in civilization and ushered in the Renaissance era to save the, the Europeans from dying. You almost died out because of the plague. So it was uh -huh. the Moors who came in there and, and, and ushered in a new era. That's why they have a saying, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. That's because the Moors came in in 7-Eleven. So the Moors helped create universities and all types of things there. Oh. But when they got the Moors out, this is when white supremacy started happening. So there's a great <laughs> correlation between the Moors and white supremacy. Okay, so until until the Moors came, now the Moors came all the way up to Poitiers in France in 732, and they were beaten back there. They were oh, stuck okay. there. But hold on, hold on, hold on. But until they showed up, there was nothing the, nothing on the order of a civilization, nothing like a university. And without them, there wouldn't have been any of that stuff. <laughs> The Romans, in, uh, for example, or the Greeks, for example, they, yeah. they were just a penny ante po folks who just didn't have any kind of civilization. Well, right? you know, was all the Rome, then when or, the Gauls, or maybe they were all black to begin with. No, no, no. When the, when the Romans were, the Romans were a fixed mulatto race, just like the Greeks. They were a oh, fixed mulatto yeah. race. Well, this is why Greeks and, and Italians, they were considered white until fairly recently. There's a reason why. Wait, so, wait, wait. And Napoleon, have... and Napoleon had a saying, Africa starts in Rome. So... That meant that those are uh, really mulatto people. So we're going <laughs> so to talk we, we, we have we have statues of Greeks and Romans. They oh. don't look the least bit mulatto to me. Oh, am I just am I cross eyed or what's my problem? Those statues are built in the eighteen hundreds. You have statues at museums Ooh. that don't have a scratch in them. That's supposed to be two thousand years old. That's ridiculous. Oh. Those are 
Those are forgeries. Many oh, of them are forgeries. Oh, Many so the white supremacists them. came up with these forgeries to convince themselves that the Greeks and the Romans were white? Absolutely. I, I didn't say that. No, 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 no. Didn't say oh, that. Okay. Well, why were they? Who's forged? Who forged them, and why? They they whitened them up a little bit more later oh. on down the line. Because again, Greeks and Romans were not considered white until like the 1920s and 30s. They didn't consider them white for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay.